joy so these two men of god influenced me influenced me a lot uh, so uh, from 78 to 85 i was here then 85 god opened a door for me to go to saudi arabia where we were there for uh, 15 years and then um, you know since i was running a underground church there uh the company came to know about that they terminated me from the job when we lost the job then god opened a door new door for us to go to us my wife is a nurse and uh, that's how we ended up in uh, in the united states um so from 2001 we are in south in um, memphis tennessee uh, memphis tennessee us and um before going there god has told us that you know i am going to send you a place where there is not many malayalis i believe that you are from atlanta yeah i heard that you know jo pastor joji has already told me so memphis is is a place that you, even you might not have heard many malayalis there and not many so the uh, god told us that we i am going to send you a place where there is not many malayalis not many pentecostals but i'll give you multilingual professional people to wor- to worship with you so and we clinged on to that promises and then you know we worked there uh, from zero from zero many years myself and my wife and children we sat on the floor and we worship for many many years in our home itself and then uh, you know now almost 25 to 30 people are there to worship with us we recently purchased a building and uh, you know it is renovated and uh, we are worshiping there so i know the time limit uh, you know many months ago i called pastor joji and told him that you know we are coming uh, he said he was very gladly accepted us but i don't know whether he forgot that thing or not to couple of weeks ago again i called and reminded that i'll be here so whether i get the time for minister or not it is my pleasure to be here the my home church in, in in new delhi praise the lord and worship you and also to see the growth of the church hallelujah that time we had only malayalam worship now we can see that there is hindi service and then english service and again another service is there the church is growing and you know praise the lord i am so glad and i'm so happy to be with you all please continue to uphold us in your prayers god willing this thursday we are going to kerala and then on 22nd we are flying back 20 in fact 23rd we are flying back from delhi uh, on our way back also we'll give we are going through delhi but we'll not have any time to uh, have a break here so my son uh, joel is here and joel's wife is the uh, is caitlin who sang just now and we god has blessed us with four children two girls and two boys and uh, uh, two of them are married two are yet to be married and uh, they're all uh, now uh, they are doing very good there uh, but with the due to the lack of time i conclude here praise the lord <laughs> praise the lord for having us here and to give us a few minutes to introduce ourselves praise the lord please uphold our church in memphis tennessee praise the lord thank you pastor for taking that time thank you so much well today we have a guest speaker dr suresh uh, i know him for quite some time well recently only i had a more closer relationship that is during pandemic actually and that was a good time i'm in very right time where i could have a, a more closer connection through o- online and he took us through some studies which actually was life changing studies for me personally and uh, so i'm so grateful that this man of god is here among us he has come along with his wife sister julie back over there would you please stand yes yes she's from sri lanka they have been married for many years blessed with three children and settled in atlanta he has come along with his friend dan and his wife also dan dan yes dan and his wife is also there right at the back uh thank you so much for uh, coming and just yeah let us welcome dr suresh in the name of the lord amen hey all good morning <laughs> maybe I'm, i'm not meant to speak <laughs> already i've stolen the testimonies i've stolen 
you know, somebody else who could have been preaching this morning, I stand as a this morning. <laughs> so grateful, so grateful for the opportunity, Pastor Sam. Uh, and, and amazing to see the work that is growing here. I, I, I don't know if any of you remember me. I, I was here, uh, I don't know when, 2020 maybe, just before the pandemic, I think. And uh, so, so grateful. I, 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 I want to ask Dan to come and share a brief word. Yeah, please. Uh, Dan has been a great friend. Uh, 20 years ago, I met him. Uh, he met me through a newsletter. He was in Minneapolis. I was living in Chicago at that time. And we never met for about a year. But he, God used him to sow a seed for us to go on mission to Sri Lanka when the war was going on. And ever since that day, he's become a dear friend, a ministry partner. And uh, I, 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 I continue to see and, and model after this man's humility. In, in how he gives himself to the Lord. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Well, it's great to be here. I can definitely tell the joy of the Lord is here. I noticed uh, in America and in India, when you're walking out of most places, people are not smiling. <laughs> but, but here, definitely the joy of the Lord is here. When I come in here this morning, when the, the other service was exiting, I think maybe 90% had big smiles on their faces. So it was... <laughs> It's great to be here, so I, I thank you for that. So, and I've I've been a Christian since 1993, and I've also been a, a businessman since 1995. And one thing I was thinking, so I don't speak as a pastor; I'll speak as a businessman. So, in in business, we in the, some business models, you have to have an exit plan, right? And you have to; it's part of, part of life. And and. Uh, and so one thing I was thinking is, is pastors, they don't have exit plans. So I, I came up with two strategies for you guys for, for exit plan for a pastor. So number one is you, you take the message that you hear that, that Sunday, you take it home and you study the, the Bible passage and you study the words of your pastor and then you apply them to, to, to life and you do what your pastor tells you to do. Now here's the secret. You come back the next Sunday you come up to the pastor and you say, pastor, it worked. I did this, this, and this. And you know what will happen? He'll be in shock. He'll probably even have a heart attack. And an ambulance will rush him away. And then you'll have to get a new pastor. So that's one, that's one way, one way. Another way you can get rid of, have an exit strategy for your pastor would be to pray for him. Pray for the elders. Because when you do that, God's grace will come through you to him. That's the way it normally works. God's grace comes through people. And, and what will happen is he'll become such a great pastor preaching and his church will grow. And then other churches will hear about him, other mega churches. And they're going to come and they're going to hire him away from you guys. <laughs> so that's another exit strategy that you guys could have for your pastors. So. But I just want to say thanks for having us here. It's great to worship. Uh, the spirit is, is here. It's great. Uh, the same spirit. When I walk into church back home, I, I feel the same thing as I do here. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Dan. Let me see. I don't think I have anything more to say. Add to all what has been. Um, yeah, I like to hear myself. Uh, so if we can get some monitor, I would appreciate that. Yeah, so, so um, where do I begin? Caitlin, thank you for that beautiful song. What does it say? Let me just look at it. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, truly, If we are in awesome wonder, we have no analysis of who God is. He's a mystery. Where there is mystery, there's wonder. Where there is wonder, there is true submission, prostration of our soul. 
Because unless we see Jesus as the coming of the end of our self, there's no magical formula in Jesus. It's not a magical name. It's a name that evokes a realization of emptiness within us. At that point, we are delivered. At that point, we are delivered from the self that says, I'm somebody. And I made it. And you had the humility, Caitlin, to allow the congregation sound more than your beautiful voice? Did you pay attention to it? Let's be here. Let's be here. Let's not be thinking about because the Lord cannot bless you except where you are right now. So about the future and all that, yeah, it's good for songs. But God is I am. If he's not here, then he's nowhere. And that's a problem for our mind because it's like a jumping bean. It jumps. So you've got to find a way to bring them back and put it captive to Christ. So we are learning and training ourselves to be human. Not superhuman. Human. Because the Lord, how great is He, is seen in His humility. My soul sings because when I think that God, His Son not sparing, sent Him to die. He who is life, for in Him was life and this life became the light of humankind. And so the, the, the psalm that I want to speak to you from this morning I was telling my um, my wife and my friends that this is one of the first times that I don't have points and I don't know where I'm going with this except I know I got to finish in the next 20 minutes <laughs> but just to direct your thoughts there's only one thing that I want you to capture because waiting and warring is your theme. How do we wait is going to determine how we experience God. And the warring is usually this way. Because victory is this way. Jehovah Nissi. The hands lifted up. When the hands grew tired, there was somebody supporting the hands of Moses lifted up. And that became the banner of victory. Amen. But most importantly, the recognition that God is the one fighting the battle for us. All Moses did with the Amalekites were fighting. The, when the hands were lifted up, the Lord was fighting the battles for him. So, Psalm 27, um, usually have PowerPoints and all this, but it's great that I don't need anything. <laughs> I'm not tied to anything. I'm freed to speak this morning. Amen. And as a Christian, the greatest experience is freedom. This is why he came. This is why truth, beauty, and goodness. We sang this morning about God. You're good. You're good. The goodness of God is all around us. Great. I have it right in front of me. The Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't know what was happening in the life of David. He was a worshipper. He, he learned that, I think, maybe through a lot of pain and rejection in his life. 
very early on, a little boy, probably shorty, <laughs> because all the brothers were tallies, looked down on him and said, you lunch boy, we are the warriors. The little boy running around carrying lunch for his warrior brother, strong and mighty, overlooked by dad. Dad didn't think much of him, that he presented the brothers with the outward appearance. A men of significance that this would be the prospective king of Israel. God had other plans. The little boy every time, especially after the anointing, being rejected, go away from here. What do you have to do in this place of war? And the little boy had learned in his life to be quietened in his soul. I don't think much disturbed him because he knew rejection, he knew pain, he knew bullying. And he used to lie down and say, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't have any needs. The need to become great warrior. No, he didn't have that plan. Nobody put it inside like our parents do. Unless you become a physician. Like my mother, you know, out of her sincere heart said that over and over and over and over. You will not amount, you will not be enough son unless you become a physician like my brother. <laughs> Dr. George Vergis, he's a surgeon. You got to become like him. If you don't, your life will not amount to anything. I didn't know how to deal with pain. David knew. David was a little boy. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not mourn. He gives me rest. And when the brothers rejected him, probably he went around saying, the righteous. Oh, he trains me for war and my fingers for battle. The little boy with slingshots training himself, little beetles, little things, and then bear, and, and then lions, and then Goliath. Everything was the same. The little beetle and the Goliath. He didn't make any difference to him because something inside of him is what he writes. I don't know when this happened. Probably running away from his son, rejected by his son, Absalom, the son whom he loved, the son of his bosom. Probably in fear and anxiety and apprehension and worry. But within him was the confidence that he writes and sings this song. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Amen. The Lord is the stronghold. In other words, he is, he's holding me. He's a very strong tower. He's a refuge. El Elohim, I find refuge. When the foundations are being destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Oh, they find refuge. Psalm 11. Fear comes from our subconscious mind. Something that the voice of your mother, your father, that says you, you won't amount to anything. You won't know if you don't do this. And, and, and it's not anybody's fault. That's the rat race we are in. We've got to survive. No, no, no. We've we got to be better than somebody else. So selfish ambition was built into us. Which Paul says, this is destructive for the church of Jesus Christ. There's, there's not going to be unity if you think that you're better, better than somebody else because of education, because of talent, because of good looks, because of whatever. How many of you are at home today? Are you at home in your body? Do you like your skin? Do you like your height? Honestly? Okay, great. This is a mature church pastor. You've done, you've done a good job. And I hope deep down you know that. 
there is nothing more we can do to make god love us or please him he's already pleased we are already welcomed even those friends who are visiting you're welcomed into this family because this is his body but our mind is the one that traps us our mind is always jumping and projecting a self like i'm doing i'm pretending that i'm young by coloring my hair i'm fully gray and i struggle with anger and many other things i struggle with i don't want to say you thought i was a saint i'm a saint only because i'm a sinner because he didn't come for the righteous he said he came for those who are self righteous he said please don't be like them because the righteousness is going to project a self where everyone thinks so great that will be their reward and so fear comes from the voices of the past experiences of failure disappointments regrets and we can live in that if you live there then you will live in anxiety and worry and what is what am i going to wear what am i going to do if my son doesn't get iit admission as though iit is the greatest trust of our lives as the economies of the world are the greatest trust and the strength of our being this man knows the lord really intimately the lord is the strong he is holding me by my right hand therefore who should i be afraid of when the wicked advance against me to devour me it is my enemies ha <laughs> yeah it is guys like goliath who fall <laughs> they're blown and gone it's the breath of god and we are having big preparing big uh, ballistic missiles and things like that and the small virus comes and poof <laughs> struggling for breath it should be a time when we realize our breath is the experience of life he breathed into us and we became a soul amen what does it mean connected with god so what does it profit a man if he gains everything else and this get disconnected with god in his soul a mind will always say i want to be successful but our hearts should be i am content Amen. in success and failure that's very hard but david could say that <laughs> committed adultery and murdered and 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 he says god you still love me everywhere you are when i go there you are when i go to the depths of the sea you are there you know everything before i speak my heart my mind whatever i'm thinking and when i rise up when i sit down when i sleep oh god you're like a surveillance constantly camera upon me yet i'm i'm amazed that you love me amen you hem me in this is what christ does this is why we have to be careful when we pray to see the world through the eyes of god he doesn't see hindu muslim he sees his people amen some struggle to know his love and those who know him actually are known by him they know that god knows them rather than 
Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. That's, that's kind of an intellectual pursuit. If I know everything about Jesus, where he was buried, his bones, his length, and his color of eyes, and all this analysis that we theologians do, research, trying to prove the existence. You don't, you, you don't get to prove God. He is. No apologetics needed annually, actually. A life that is lived out because he has... He is the light. This is the only place that God declares, I am the light. Of course, Jesus did when he came. I am the light of the world. But This is in the Old Testament. This is the only place Yahweh is light. Light gives differentiation of everything. Light brings out the colors. Light brings out the distinctions. The tree would be a blur if not for light. You will never see the leaf, the dimensions of the leaf. That's what light does. It distinguishes and dispels darkness that the psalmist was. He says, God, these are dark days, but even in the midst of darkness, the Lord is my light. And he delivers me from the darkness of my mind that is, could, could be anxious, could be fearful, could be always worried. So he does a favor to himself by relieving himself, saying, no, 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 I know this. I know this God. He's been my shepherd. He leads me beside still waters to green pastures where my soul is at rest. Deep waters. Deep waters, when you see pictures of deep waters, the, the, that means the sheep is resting. It's had its fill. And God wants us to take us deeper. Actually, if there was a preference, I would just be in silence. There used to be a time where I needed worship to prop me up. Now I just want to be in silence. Because very often words become the way we communicate. Words, 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 words. And words loses its power when the word does not become flesh. God was not in the sound. God was not in the thunder, was not in the lightning, but was in the silence. The Hebrew word gentle whisper literally means in the silence. It's very hard for us. Silence, the, is the only silence we know is the noise of the world saying you are not enough you got to wear me you got to rub me you got to color me and you got to do all this to prop myself only then maybe you'll be enough so a person who makes million dollars is always thinking this doesn't satisfy i got to make five million okay i need to Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. My, though an army besiege me, I'm not doing an exposition here. Though a war should break against me, the demons that fight me, he begin to recognize all these are in the, in the mind. The Goliath is big, dimensions are big, the feet is, that's all the play of the mind. Inside of me is someone stronger. That's, that's actually overcoming overcoming Jesus when he went into the wilderness it, say, it says that he faced the wild beast I often think the demons of temptation are you if 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 you are who you claim to be that's where your identity is going to be in crisis a friend of mine during COVID time, good Christian, was on my mission team, colonel in the army, U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force. He, I called him up and he said, 
it's Resha. I'm completely, I'm actually, I feel like throttling my wife and I don't know what to do with my children because I don't know who I am without my uniform. When our identity becomes our job. So there's something deeper within, there's something deeper within us that says that we are God's beloved. We must hear that voice, which is why he says, and I want to, I want to bring it to a close here. This is the only thing that we should be asking. One thing have I, one thing, one thing I ask from the Lord. This one thing I desire, because I have many desires. That's, that's how fragmented our heart is. We want that, we want that, we want that. And I, I wanted everything, <laughs> and I still want. But then I, I have to make a choice. This one thing I desire, I ask for. This one thing only I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Which simply means, I don't think he was just talking of dwelling in the temple because he's a warrior. He, he's out there winning victories and bringing peace over 29 different nations. And then he's counting the blessing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. What, I'm amazed what you have done. This, this guy knows what it means to be out there. He's not a monk. Cloistered somewhere and saying, "This guy, let me dwell in the house of the Lord." No, no, no. He, he is something is settled inside of him. I dwell. Mm, Jesus said, "Don't worry when I go, because I'm in my Father's house are many mansions." By the way, that's that's not somewhere out there. It's here. Mansions are the places where we are. The kingdom of God is within us. Will we enter that? That's where. The mansions that we are, are the places where you work. That is the harvest field. That is the place where you can experience the tabernacle. The dwelling place of God. You are the dwelling place. Me, I am the dwelling place of God. So there are mansions of where we rest. There are mansions where we play. There are man These are simply spaces. Vast spaces. Not cluttered spaces. Vast spaces. Not filled with goods and services. That says buy me. Wear me. Then. No, these are open spaces. From which God speaks. He separated the waters. Created expanse. Genesis. From which he spoke. In that expanse. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. I am pleased with you. I want to give you the rest from your works. Hebrews. Yes, yes. Joshua gave Canaan rest. But I want to give you rest from your works. Enter into my rest. So, in fact, that word, one thing have I asked, desired from the Lord. This only thing I seek. That I made. The word seek there is, is a translation, but there is a, there's another translation that says inquire, which actually the Hebrew word means meditate. To gaze upon his beauty. See, truth, beauty, goodness. God is good. Everything he created is good. So, when I in awesome wonder, when I consider the stars, when I look at the lilies of the valley, when I look at the birds, Dan, this morning I saw several kites, and because of you, I, I paid attention. Wow, they're flying like this. 
we don't have time to pay attention to the to the that's why paul says the the world that he created is declaring the glory of god but that truth has been suppressed because why we want to monetize everything we want to take that bird that is flying and put it in a cage we want to take the cut the tree and make furniture out of it i mean that's okay you can do that's how we think how can we use everything including people to gaze upon the beauty of the lord and to seek him in his temple i don't have time to talk about how we can seek but i i i can share how i seek every day and it's not rocket science <laughs> it is learning to find a place not in the public square not in the central building of the church where everybody can see with hands lifted up jesus said please don't be like them long robes hands lifted up display of de- devotion that that's 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 not what it is go into your closet and to the unseen god give yourself give yourself for he who he or she who comes to god must first believe that he is he is here jehovah ham now i can be a provider because it's, i love you i can provide but when i provide you got to see that i am ire they shall see abraham saw the provision of god in his need we need a new pair of eyes to see how god's grace is flowing in our lives when you receive this month when you receive your salary let not a thought come to your mind i worked this hard for this money you can see jehovah jireh my provider Amen. when you receive a gift of dad i love you thank you take it and offer it back to god in your evening sacrifice god my boss told me that i'm a good worker it's because of you it's your provision of wisdom it's your provision of everything because god is flowing his anointing the christ christ simply means the anointing making everything sacred your workspace everything you touch because you're anointed every furniture was had the anointing oil in the tabernacle of god so how can you be less if you recognize the christ in him we live and move and have our being god in his wisdom knew where every person should dwell he did so so that man would seek him and as though he is far away no he is near in for in him we live and move that's the context where Paul, where luke writes that so people are seeking so this light within us has to this life that flows within us must become the light not words for they that sit in darkness did not hear the words of preaching they saw they that sit in darkness saw the light and jesus said don't hide it don't hide it don't hide it under the bushel let this little life of mine i'm going to let it shine but the light shines only when we acknowledge the presence now 
wherever you are in the midst of your work you can pause because when fear grips your heart what the boss is going to tell you you pause god the tent has been extended into indian bank here the canopy god has stretched the dwelling place of god is where man finds his rest if you're not rest rested here you can have the best mansion with the softest pillow and softest mattress solomon says my i toss psalm 127 unless the lord builds the house oh my god unless the lord watches over my family and my concerns and my fears for in vain we toil in vain ha oh, that's technology see that it is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest eating the bread of anxious toil and solomon said toil even the most sincere toil is vanity empty zilch zero emptiness cannot be filled with stuff i learned that so the art of it is letting go it's no point singing surrender if you don't surrender and let it go from your heart that these things do not have will not have hold over my life whatever it is maybe a relationship maybe a career maybe everything that you put your strength in because he says the lord is my strength for they that wait upon the lord he ends that psalm can you go to the end of that verse of psalm and i'll close here i think i'm already 5 minutes late blessed sorry the end of uh, the verse 27 that's the instruction that david gives us and says wait for the lord be strong strength arises when you wait upon the lord when you wait upon the lord that's a song but how does strength arise in the midst of the battles it's endurance enduring the storm enduring it's not escaping that's another religion escaping sorrow escaping pain no in you're not going to escape to heaven too not don't wait for heaven heaven is here heaven comes down heaven is in your heart if you experience it here you can continue into the afterlife waiting is persevering through trials not praying away fasting away to get rid of that that's how david endured and he says the love endures forever because there we find the christ fellowship with his suffering we have a suffering god not somebody who just took away our sins but we have a suffering god and i experienced that when i had pneumonia and lungs was really uh, and jesus came close to me and said my son your lungs is in my lungs Amen. and a new usual in- intimacy i felt that really took me out from that that moment, moment of anxiety am i going to die or am i going to lungs what's going to happen breath 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 father we bow before you there's only one thing we seek there's only one thing we choose to seek wherever we are the dwelling place of god can be if only can, we can be aware of your presence we are so conscious of what others think we are so conscious of who we should become but you have already determined many are the plans of man but god's purposes will be will only prevail we thank you for the prevailing church here we thank you for lord that this life that we live may our light truly be attractive to those who sit in darkness 
May it awaken them looking at our lives, not just hearing our, the words that come out as a preaching, going to hell or whatever that is. God, may they see their lives. May we multiply ourselves in others as light in us dispels the darkness that they are in. So they too can sing, the Lord is my light and my salvation, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance from myself that thinks so highly of itself that I need to put it on the Facebook so that a million people can see and like. Lord, I don't need those likes. I thank you for you not just like me. I am your beloved. Hepsiba. 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 You're not Israel anymore, struggling for blessing. You are Hepsiba. In fact, you're my Beulah. I am married to you. Let's just pause and sit and don't, let's not hurry into something else. Just for a, a, a minute, let's just pause in silence. Praise God. Amen. Let's just all stand together and just take some time to worship Him. You know, the true rest we need to experience in the midst of all the challenges sometimes some of us may be going through. We can say like David, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life whom shall I be afraid of praise God let's learn to rest in the Lord find a space where you're alone with the Lord build up that kind of discipline where we can just find rest now the Goliaths that you have to fight are not outside they are inside and if we can deal with those Goliaths within David learned that when he was in the desert looking after his father's flock he learned that that's why he could handle that bear and the lion with his bare hands because he found his rest in the Lord let us learn to find our rest in the Lord amen hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah praise you Jesus hallelujah Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. No. Pray that your word which you have given to us, Lord, will continue to 
work in our hearts then as we come in your presence and encounter you face that mystery we will be in awe of you lord god awe of that great and awesome god jesus and true worship will rise out of our hearts thank you father i pray that lord may your peace and grace be upon your people as they go back we bless you in jesus name we pray amen man please be seated we have a small ministry before we say the benediction uh we have a child dedication uh brother jack mar and gigi would you please come forward and we will just pray for the child praise god bible says that children are a blessing from the lord amen it's a, such a blessing to have children but it also comes with a great responsibility to us we have to be stewards of his kingdom and our children are given so that we become better stewards better servants of the lord because as we bring up the children the lord will teach us patience kindness truth and be loving so we pray that the lord will help jackmar and jiji to praise god they waited upon the lord for some years and god blessed them with this wonderful wonderful child and the child's name is atvika uh, unique matchless praise god yes is that right yeah yes they are blessed with because god has made this child so beautifully and wonderfully fearfully and wonderfully made and uh, so that's why this child is unique in fact all of us are unique praise god each one of us are unique uh, we are matchless we are we cannot be we are not the same because in the kingdom of god there is no stereotypes actually each one is a masterpiece of the lord praise god so let's just pray that the lord will continue to bless uh this couple let's just pray for the child and and then i will pray for the parents <laughs> okay father we thank you for this blessed child we just pray that you will bless oh god this child as she grows up your grace and blessing shall be upon this child keep the child from every harms and dangers of the enemy and sicknesses and diseases lord of god amen i just pray that right from the uh, lord of god understanding of this child lord when the child comes to an age of understanding lord she will know you lord of father and you will lord of god she will know not only know you and you will know her and they will have an intimate relationship lord of god father we just pray this child will be brought in the fear of the lord and you in your grace i pray for jackumar and jiji we just bless them in the name of jesus and this word that is the lord spoke to us today jackumar and jiji the lord is your light and your salvation whom shall you fear The Lord is the stronghold of your life whom shall you be afraid of Many many things may happen around you but you find rest and refuge in the El Elyon El Elyon a refuge under him Praise God because he is the El Shaddai the all sufficient God he will supply every need of your life from the riches and glory find your rest in the Lord We just pray for your blessing upon this parents Lord I pray that you will give them wisdom understanding grace strength to bring up the child in your fear in the knowledge of god so that the child will grow physically intellectually and the lord spiritually and emotionally healthy and very lord of god jesus balanced in you father in every way lord the child will be blessed father and the child shall be a blessing to others make this family a blessing to others lord for your kingdom let them be a missional family lord of god having lord your mission as the focus of building your kingdom making disciples and make, building your kingdom lord bless them jesus in jesus name we pray amen man And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of the Father the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with every one of us now and forevermore amen god bless you all uh thank you pastor suresh for taking the time to be with us i wish we had more time to sit and listen praise god thank you dan for coming god bless you uh
first i thank the lord for pastor rajan and his wife the grandparents praise god let's just thank the lord for them praise god amen man praise god yeah announce Uh, before the announcements, I do request the uh, newcomers to please go with our ushers. Yes, the ushers are those with the host badge and the big welcoming smile. Yes, I keep repeating the same thing. I don't think I can <laughs> find a better phrase. Yes. Uh, the announcements, yes, you can project them. Yes, uh, so we are a castle-based church, and if you are not part of a castle, please do speak to uh, the pastor or one of the elders, and we can ensure that you are part of a castle. Castles uh, continue as usual, online or offline format, according um, to your convenience. So please do be part of a castle. Yes, those are all the announcements. Have a blessed week ahead. <laughs>